Hi, Mike Kennedy with you today, and we're getting back to our photography ser series. I had a request for more photography. So we're going to look at 110 cameras, Minox cameras, and first I want to discuss format. Okay, at one time things were based more around an 8x10 inch format the view cameras. If you had a 4x5 camera that was called a quarter plate because it wasn't a full 8x10 it was a quarter of it. The 4x5 and up get known as large format. Then you had medium format. Well medium format basically became known as anything that was shot on 120 film. That could usually range from 6x6 to 6x9 and uh, there are some super wide angle cameras that do 6x12, but that isn't very common. So then you get down to 35 millimeter. Well, 35 millimeter was called miniature. Now, we don't think of 35 millimeter film as being miniature, but you got to remember 35 millimeter film was originally a movie camera film and then got used for photography. Uh, that's why the sprocket holes are on either end either side of it. You notice that 120 film doesn't have sprocket holes, but 35 millimeter film does. Whoops. Okay, so anything smaller than 35 millimeter is classed as sub-miniature. So that technically includes half frame 35 millimeter, or there's some uh, 24 by 24, I believe, is the robot camera format, but 110 film and Minox film are also considered sub-miniature. Now the, the Pentax camera 110 uh, is a 14 by 17 millimeter uh, film size. And uh, the uh, so 110 film is considered sub-miniature format and it has a 14 by 17 millimeter uh, format I believe is correct. Uh, 110 film is actually 16 millimeters wide, 16 millimeter film, uh, but instead of having the sprockets holes on one or both edges continually along, what they did was put uh, holes every frame size and they actually printed a mask. In other words, when they make 110 film, they actually exposed it, pre-exposed the outlying area around the image to be black. So most 110 cameras depend on needing that sprocket hole and without that sprocket hole they won't function. So if you take a regular 16 millimeter film that has, uh, say you cut it down and you try putting reloading a 110 cartridge, which you can do, and put it in most cameras, it won't work. But, ah, it does work in the 110 Pentax camera. Because the 110 Pentax camera does not rely on that notch, that hole, to achieve proper framing. So you can cut down uh, regular film to put in these. But, Actually, there's no need now because what's happened recently is Lomo has come out with 110 film in black and white and color. Fairly expensive at $8 a roll plus, plus uh, shipping, but uh, it allows you to use your cameras again. Now, 110 cameras like this, this is considered to be one of the sharpest lenses that was put on a 110 camera. And what's so unique about this is this is a ba little baby SLR. In other words, you actually look through it and you focus. It has a split screen uh, micro prism that you can use to focus with for critical focusing. And what's neat, because it is an SLR, it is also an interchangeable lens SLR. Here it is with the telephoto, which is a, it's kind of nice, they kept all the apertures the same. So this is a, now it's, instead of having the 24 millimeter lens, I've got a 50 2.8 lens, they're all 2.8 lenses. So now I have a telephoto lens on it. 
sorry. Okay, and likewise, I can take that off and I can put the 18 millimeter, oops, lens cap, on and now it's a wide angle camera. So you can see the versatility. Now, these are the lenses that I could afford or have found at reasonable prices, but they do make, uh, there was a zoom lens, I think there was a teleconverter. Uh, these lenses are all threaded, so they have close-up lenses and filters and different things. And they made some different models. This is the lower model. There's a higher model as well, which I don't have. I actually have several of these, because at one time it seemed like there was a period where film cameras, people were just dumping them to get rid of them. But now this one is useful again. I'm going to show you here the dedicated flash. You can see it has a, a uh, the flash contacts, but it also has a little pin that's going to push in here and tell the shutter to be set at 1 30th of a second, I believe. So you meet the flash on there, and then uh, you have a range of 2.6 to 15 feet that you can shoot. Now one of the problems, I guess you could say, with this is for a while they offered only uh, Kodak and everybody but cut back and they were, well, Kodak cut back and being the major film supplier at one time, you could only get 400 ASA film, which didn't work as well on this camera that's keyed for 80. Now some of the Pentaxes are keyed for both uh, ASA 80 and 400, so uh, they can do a better job with the 400. But with the 400, what you would see on is close-up flash shots would be kind of burned out. Other than that, you'd never notice a problem. But the nice thing about this is that you can get now again the proper ASA film, like a, a the black and white and color film, and you will find that you can make it if someone does it properly, you can make grain-free 5x7s that will really look good. Uh, doing them yourself, you could do a lot more than that. But I just know I worked in uh, photo finishing, and it was very easy for us to make really high quality enlargements on the automatic equipment we had uh, of 110 negatives up to 5x7 very, very easily. And you know what's happened steadily too that's made these smaller formats more attractive is uh, the film quality continue to increase. You, this is a little film lesson, maybe I shouldn't include it in, but we had C22 films, the old coat of color 80. Then we went to C41 films, different chemical base, and then we had a huge increase in the quality of films. They went to uh, doing things uh, with the different layers. Then they went to discovering how to control the grain size, but also the grain shape. And once they establish how to control the grain shape, uh, the quality of, of some of these films jumped enormously. It's kind of funny if you're familiar with the disc format, which I, I probably have a disc camera around here somewhere, which I'll show. I would say that the quality of the film improved just enough to make that viable when the, the format died, the disc format died. We used to uh, process tons of disc film, but when they, they had finally increased the quality of the film enough so that 8 by 10 millimeter film size started yielding real good results, disc cameras were over. That was the end of them. Minox f format is 8 by 10 millimeters as well. So here you have it, the first uh, uh, in the line of 110 cameras we're going to show. And I just want to say that this lens, the, the 18, no, the 24 millimeter, uh, has been voted one of the best lenses on any sub-miniature camera. So uh, you're not going to have any problem with lens quality with this. And uh, from this, we're going to go into some rangefinder. Uh, 110 cameras, the Kodak 50 and 60, were extremely high quality lenses uh, and cameras. Uh, at one time, Kodachrome 64 was available and would come out very well in these cameras. I shot a lot of it and uh, in the, the, the Kodak cameras. And uh, we'll show a few other ones. I've got a uh, Canon.
And then we're going to show some really, really cheap 110 cameras as well. But here's our first one. We're going to start out with what I would consider the all-around best. Uh, because it's an SLR, it allows you to precisely focus. It comes with interchangeable lenses, which, again, this isn't the whole thing. Oh, it also can take an auto, a winder. Got one of those somewhere. I didn't bring that out because, I don't know, <laughs> I don't need a winder for a 110 film. Uh, so, anyway, there it is. The first in the line of the 110 cameras and other sub-miniature cameras that we'll be looking at on the photography section of uh, my YouTube page. Uh, have a good day.